Like every culture that came before it, gaming culture has a language and look all its own. To me, with gaming, there's no boundaries and there's no borders. And while these gamers are busy dominating their opponents, gaming culture is dominating the globe. More people than ever are turning to PC games as their preferred method of entertainment and connecting with others. The ability for gamers to customize and mod their unique in-game experiences and free-to-play games drawing in tens of millions of PC gamers has created an incredibly social community, one that sets PC gaming apart from other platforms. You may be playing with someone in another country and you won't know until they say that they have to go to bed and you look at your watch and it's only 2 p.m. I think that there's a myth that gaming and online interaction is a simulation, but in fact, those kinds of interactions are not very much different than offline in person. Luckily for me, I'm English. We, we don't have to speak many other languages. Use of emoticons, use of slang, and other ways to express the intentions and motivations of the gamers. People are just more used to keyboard and mouse. I think that's why PC gaming is bigger. Around the world, PC gaming has given rise to arenas, fans, and superstars. In North America, it's a multi-billion dollar industry that's permeated every aspect of pop culture, from action figures to big budget Hollywood movies. But who is the North American gamer? To me, the American gamer is kind of following the rest of the world. It's interesting that Americans love to make video games. Americans love to buy video games. Americans love to play video games. But to be known as a game player in America still, for some reason, has a stigma. You know, maybe a rosy-eyed approach to history is that Americans, as much as we can fight with each other about trivial things, we come together when there's a common enemy. And video games have to have an enemy, or at least a puzzle to solve, and that really brings Americans together. While Americans continue to find their identity in the global landscape, eSport audiences continue to skyrocket around the world. In 2013, eSports garnered 71 million viewers globally. Nearly half of those viewers were American. Yet of the top 15 eSports earners last year, only one was from the United States. Eight were from Europe. With top players making six-figure salaries, eSports is a way of life for Europeans. eSports is a sport in my mind, so most people they can't class it and most people will say it's not a sport. How can that be a sport? It's video games. There is no difference because you have to have natural ability. It's hand-eye coordination is the main thing and you need that in sport. So if someone like throws a pass in American football, you've got to see the ball and you've got to catch it. The same kind of thing happens in gaming. Like top level gamers will do stuff that average gamers won't even think of. It's easy playing at home and anybody could be the best in the world at home when their mum's like bringing them a cup of tea and stuff like that. Uh, but stick them in front of 10,000 people, will they freeze? And that's what happens with pro gaming. It's extremely stressful at that level, uh, especially when you've got so much pressure on you, especially now with the salaries and the, the possibility of losing your salary if, you're, if you lose certain games. Everybody has their own rituals and superstitions. So my biggest superstition is don't touch a trophy that you haven't won. If, if you touch it, that's it, it's over. I threaten to hit my players if they ever go near a trophy. It's like, ah! You can touch it once you win it. And while Europeans are busy winning trophies, other countries are hot on their heels as gaming culture is spreading to every corner of the globe. In Africa, there are more gaming studios and startups than ever before. The Middle East is home to some of the world's most active consumers, with an estimated market of $1.7 billion. Not to be outdone by Brazil, whose anticipated growth of 34% is way ahead of the global average of 7%. But when it comes to gaming culture, Asian gaming meccas like South Korea are leading the pack for the rest of us. Korean players, it's their job ever since they're, they're in high school when they start the uh, gaming. Some of them, they drop out of high school, just go full time for gaming. You see a lot of Korean players coming out because they can see that they can earn more money. The highest paid gamers professionally are Korean or Swedish. In South Korea, gaming isn't just about beating your opponents, it's about socializing with them. While broadband internet access is relatively high, Korean youths prefer to frequent internet cafes called PC banks, where they can eat, drink, and socialize as they play. The late 90s, PC banks appeared, where people and kids would go and play games, it would be extremely social. PC bank just became so famous and popular, and it's like everywhere. 
one really famous game called Lineage. It's like crazy. It's still going on. The game is like 15 years old. I think the Lineage is the big reason that PC bang got so big. And there now, it's accepted that playing games is, is good. The top players are treated like gods, not stars, gods. With esports now more mainstream than ever and players connecting with each other around the globe, gaming culture is changing as rapidly as it's spreading. But where will we be a decade from now? Gameplay has actually increased over the last few years, which implies that there's this preference toward something that's more socially fulfilling um, than something that's less interactive. We just found out that Amazon have bought Twitch and what that means long term for gaming. I think it, it, it just means that more exposure straight away. In the last few years, we've been chasing mainstream media up until Twitch came along. So now, mainstream is chasing what we're doing now. I think gaming in America in about 10 years is probably going to look a lot like, say, the NFL looked in its early days. Gaming will become an actual sports, esports. So it might be in Olympic, maybe. That's what I hope. Where it's come from in the last 10 years to where it is now is amazing. And where it's going to be in the next 10 years, God knows. There's world champions out there sitting at home. They just don't know they're world champions yet. Just keep gaming, because sooner or later, ESPN is going to have a block of time dedicated to professional gaming. And if you get in on the ground floor now, you'll be living the good life, doing what you want and doing what you love.